So this is the ICOM IC730 HF transceiver and um, what I'm going to do is to uh, build in a crystal uh, EF filter to uh, improve the selection, the selectivity of the CB signals. As you can hear now this is SSB signal selectivity. You get a lot of signals. And the bandwidth is quite large. So you get a lot of mixed signals. Which makes it very difficult to receive them. And switching CV narrow to CV doesn't really make any difference. Well, I don't have the original FL45 icon. Uh, crystal filter. It's quite difficult and hard to get the, these days. But I go. I've got, have got an in-red filter, which is the modern replacement uh, filter for the FL45. It has a bandwidth of 400, 400 hertz, which is uh, not quite reasonable. There are more narrow filters available. I don't know if they're for this rig. I think there we are, but. This is suitable for me, and I'm uh, going to uh, to build it in and uh, show you what uh, what the effects are on the reception. So I've now opened up the uh, the the cover as well as the uh, mainframe board on which the detection uh, parts, uh, detection print is uh, is placed. You can easily open this up from the side by unscrewing these bolts on the, si on the side and flipping this over. Um, I have got my own audio filter uh, in there. This is this PCB. It isn't the original ICOM, but I've made a yeah, similar uh, PCB myself. Um, and I will need to disconnect that before I can open it, but that's okay. The space normally where the filters for SSB improvement and CV improvement, CW improvement, will need to go is here. This is the place for the FL45 CW filter. But as you can see now, I've mounted two small coax cables to those connection points where they normally are. And they lead to the most sufficient place where I could found to put the inward filter, which is over here. So you see at the left and at the right the coax signal coming in and getting out again. This filter is stuck with uh, double-sided uh, tape, which is a good firm connection, no problem. And as you can see, it's quite bigger, uh, a bit fatter, but a bit shorter than the original FL45 uh, filters. So it, would, it can't fix, fit in the original places there. Now, what we need to do now is to uh, let the transceiver know that if there is a filter in, we need to pull this jumper and pull it over to the next connection point, like that. So it's now it was here, now it's there. Purple cable. Now the selection with the, the section with the CW filter is switched on. And I'll just show you what's uh, what happened now. So what I've uh, done now, I've um, used my signal generator instead of just radio signals. This is my signal generator for 80 meters and 2 meters with uh, built-in attenuating uh, devices. And if I switch it on, you can hear the signal. Put down the volume a bit. And you will see uh, 
when I tune down in uh, white setting, white CW setting, well, this is more or less this is more or less the tone where the signal drops down again. You can still hear, we easily hear it. Now when I switch on this filter, the signal seems to be gone, but it's out of the reception part the, of this filter. Still no signal. There it is again. So you only hear it over a small area. Select selectivity is much better now. And uh, well, let us hear what happens on real radio signals. We go to 40 meter because it's quite nice and busy there. Well, he easily had a big difference. So that does a fine job. There's only one issue when you when you uh, build this filter in, and I think it's uh, the same situation if you build the original FL45 filter in. That is that the insertion loss of this filter is uh, bigger than the insertion loss of the original filter which is built in for uh, the white setting. Now if you take this uh, a look at the schematics the service manual which is easily available in the Yahoo group of the ICOM 730 uh, I can uh, show you what happens there well, here you see the part of the schematic of the ICOM IC730 um, where the IF section in the filters are me uh, mentioned. Normally, this part is used. This is the white uh, part setting with the built-in filter here. I think it's a ceramic filter. And by means of these switching diodes and uh, switching the jumper from uh, one setting to the other, like I showed you previously, uh, this filter is switched on in CW narrow motor. Um, now what happens if the signal comes in here and goes out there, these uh, filter uh, transformers, the, uh, these are set to optimal impedance when the rig was adjusted at the factory for leading the signal through this white section. but what, very, uh, what could happen quite easily is that the impedance from the narrow filter is uh, different than a standard setting from the white filter. The white filter. Not the white, but the white filter. <laughs> so, by uh, carefully adjusting the input and output impedance levels to match the CW narrow section, uh, we can make an optimal adjustment for CW narrow which is necessary because the insertion loss of this filter is bigger than that so what happens now if I switch it back to test generator motor again a moment please so let me go to 80 meter 
to the frequency of that device. And we carefully look at the estimator to see what happened in wide and narrow mode. We see quite some difference, about two S points. Now, I've made a video recording on measurements of this uh, S meter previously, about I think one and a half year ago. It's also uh, available on my YouTube channel. Uh, so quite quite some dBs are lost when switching to CW narrow mode. And we don't want that. We want more or less the same S meter reading if we listen to a clear signal in wide or in narrow. Like this signal is clear in wide and in narrow because it's a test signal, there are no other signals. Uh, and by adjusting these transformers from the input to the output impedance to level out uh, the uh, input and output impedance of the uh, crystal filter, we can uh, reduce the difference between those settings. Well, to do that you need to I have this filter and that filter, or transformer, that one and this one. The cores are ferrite cores and qu uh, quite uh, can easily be damaged, so use a, a plastic uh, trimming device to make careful adjustments, but do it very carefully, because if it's broken it's very hard I think to get those ferrite cores again. I'll uh, let you show what the effect is. Now I've readjusted those transformers and set them to an optimal signal through the narrow filter without losing too much of course at the white filter. And you see the difference now is well just about one S point at this stage. Um, of course, the uh, the insertion loss of the crystal filter, uh, well, we can't really level that completely out because we need some gain to do that. And to build an extra EF stage, I think, is a bit too much. But if it's only, well, just about one S point, then it's okay, I think. Um, well, let's see how it performs in, uh, in practice. Well, back in practice again, in the normal setting. Let's get rid of this signal. No. You need to be careful, of course, if you're tuning in narrow mode. You easily tune over the signals and just lose them if you're too fast. So normally you just tune around in wide mode. But uh, works nice and smooth, good filter, and a real improvement for CW reception. Cheerio!